go ahead and start. All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about listing and buyer presentations. All right, anything specific you guys were hoping to learn on the call today? All right, so what we're gonna do is, um, and I mentioned this on the call, but I wanna kind of talk about it here at the very top. This may not be a full hour long class today. We'll, you know, we'll get you in there and show you where they are. And then it really comes down to you guys customizing those guides uh, for yourself and what they, what, they, uh, what they look like. I did wanna just kind of reiterate that they are expecting an app update either today or tomorrow. Um, and with that app update, I think the main feature is gonna be when a consumer looks, and I don't have any screenshots to show you because I wouldn't give them to them, but um, when you look at a listing, um, you have to be connected to an agent, right? So when I'm on my app, I have to be able to be connected to my, my agent. So best practice here might be if you're talking to a new buyer, you know, have them download the app and make sure that you're connected as the agent on that mobile app. And once that's there, when they look at a property, um, most of you guys know that when you look at that listing right now on there, it says, ask me a question, basically the agent, there'll be another section on there right below it that says schedule a virtual tour. Um, and you guys will have the ability to, uh, the consumer can pick, you know, a time and date that might work for them. And you have to confirm that obviously, but um, it can maybe streamline that process a little bit. Two other tech updates. One is um, you guys soon will have the ability to put virtual tours um, into the KWLS mm -hmm. as a link so that gets syndicated out some other places. Um, but one of the most important ones people have been asking about is I've also seen this week some time, you all should have the ability to put featured listings on your KW website. So some of you guys know that when we had like placed a website, agents like that you could have featured listings, whether it's your listings or office listings, same thing. You guys will have the ability to add up to 12 featured listings on your website. That'll be a new widget that'll come and be on the home screen later this week. Okay. All right. So let me go ahead and open up a screen and we'll go ahead and share. Um, so let's see. All right. You guys can see my screen there, hopefully. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Now, um, these guides are in the, uh, the designs section of command, right? So that's where we're gonna go spend a majority of our time today. And one of the nice things about this is, remember, it's a PDF. So just like earlier today on the call with Tipper, we were just sharing, <clears throat> right? We were just sharing the slides from our computer. So in the kind of the same mindset, you could create this buyer and seller guide and then you know, show it when you're in a virtual consultation with a buyer or a seller so that you guys are, are looking at the same uh, material. So we're gonna spend almost all of our time today in the designs applet of command. All right, so let's go ahead and start there. So agent.kw.com, we're gonna log in and then let's go ahead and click on designs. Now, has anyone gone in and played with the listing and buyer consultations that are in designs at all? Uh, Erica, you have a little bit. Do you have any sort of opinion on them as we get started here, or are you using it right now, or just you just been in there looking at it? Um, no, I've just been looking at it really. Um, there are some slides that I probably wouldn't use, and yeah. some that I really liked. Um, I really like the market and information on them, and um, all right, cool. I just found it easier, easy to use. But Good. you actually kind of said what I was hoping you were going to say, which was. These guides are like 30 pages long, right? You do not need all of them. So what we're gonna do is to get started here, we're gonna start designs, we're gonna click on the plus symbol in the bottom right hand corner. All right, so make sure we don't have any zoom faces over top of that uh, part of your screen potentially. So we'll go ahead and click the plus button here. And then we come to this screen that says create a design and the consultations are both under print. All right, so remember this is a PDF, basically a PDF version. So I'm gonna click on print and I can go ahead and click on next, right? And that should open up for us WeBrand, and this is kind of the next place we're gonna go. Now here's some theory before we, before we actually kind of jump into this guide, which is when you create this guide, you only have to do it one time basically, right? If you go in and you, and you put in your headshot and all of your contact information, you can then save it as a master copy. And then every time you have a consult with somebody, Right. Let's say I'm going to meet with a buyer named Ann. I can duplicate that master copy and just change the name. So I can say prepared for Ann Beck. 
And that's all I'd really have to do to make it a customized presentation for that consumer. <clears throat> All right, so here we are in designs. And if you look over here, they are under the listing and the buyer section. So let's go ahead and start with the buyer guide first. So if I click on buyer, you'll notice that I'll have a little drop down here and I've got buyer presentation. It says it right there and it shows you that there's two different buyer guides to pick from. So when I click on that buyer presentation, you can see these are the two different um, ones that we have. So we've got a Your Guide to Home Ownership, which is called the classic version, the white one, and they've got another one that's called Modern. Now up top here, you can see a little number. That's telling you that you could have up to 31 pages. All right, so that's what a little number means. So these two are exactly the same. Now let's go ahead and just work on the classic one, right? I think um, that's just easy to do. You can pick either one though. So once we hover over top of the classic one, you'll see in the top right-hand corner up here, it says Use. All right, and we can go ahead and click on use, and that way we can go in and start editing this document. Okay. All right, so see your piece, click on use, and now it's gonna open up into the editing software where we can now start uh, creating and customizing this guide. There's a couple pitfalls here that everyone falls into basically, or I get a phone call after teaching this class. So everyone kind of check this out for a second and then you're, you'll be off the races. You'll notice that when we come into these consultation guides, typically in designs, we have images, text, icons, logos, and KWLS. These are the five standard tabs. When you're working in a buyer or seller guide, you have an additional tab up here called templates. Now, if I scroll down, right, if I scroll down here, these are the 31 pages of the guide. All right, and what you're gonna do is, you're gonna select pages to move over and actually use in your guide, right? So again, these are your generic 31, and you're gonna scroll through here and go, hey, I would like this one, and you're gonna move it over into your guide, basically. All right, so let's go ahead and start at the top. The first two pages, guys, are instructions to you, the agent, on how to work this section. So do not grab the first page and pull it over here. Um, that's not the right thing, all right? The third page is actually the first page of the guide, All right? So you can see I'm in this little tray over here. If I scroll down to the third one, um, that's actually the first page of the guide. Now, if I'd like to use this cover page, I'm gonna click this plus button right here and you can say it says add new page. So I'm gonna click add new page and you will see it now creates a copy of that page over here in my guide, all right? So I've now got one page in my guide. Now, here's what I think is the best thing to do, is scroll through and decide which pages you wanna move over first. All right, so let's say we have the cover page, and now over here I have the table of contents, and if I wanna add that, I'm gonna click the plus button. All right, and it'll add the table of contents into my guide. All right, and they've got some other pages here. They've got one called, you know, sound design, uh, your needs come first, right? So this is some of that filler information as you're going through um, you know, this might have been something Ann Beck taught me, like Ford, right? Talking about your family, talking about your occupation, uh, all those types of things. That's what these pages are, right? Some of the setup to your buyer consultation. There's a page in here talking about your mobile app. I think this is awesome. This is exactly what we just talked about. So you could say, let's add that page into my guide. And this is where I'm going to stop and have them download the guide, right? Write down what their username and password is. And I can show them, you know, how they can book those virtual um, consultations with me on the mobile app. All right, so again, let's just grab a couple more. There's some really good pages in here. And so I would say spend a little bit of time to come in and, and, and choose the ones that you like. They've got some in here that are called your wish list, right? Which are giving you some talking points to talk about all the different parts of the home. Um, they've got a page in here called what's your neighborhood preference? Walking you through a couple questions, helping the consumer identify their favorite neighborhood, All right. So let's go ahead and add a few of these. I also really like this one here. So how home buying works. These are um, two pages all about the process of buying a home. So that's a good one. So let me say I wanna add that one and I wanna come down here and add the second page of that home buying works page, right? So we'll do that one. And then the next one is financing, all right? So how does financing work? So let's say we go ahead and add that one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take a stop here so to Erica's point, I'm probably not gonna use all 31 of these pages. 
It can just be, it can be too much. Over here, I'd like to point out, now that I've added some different pages to my guide, you can see right down here at the bottom of the tray, you see where it says pages and it says seven of seven. So I've added seven pages to my fire guide. And here's the thing, here's what you wanna do. Click this pages button and you'll see it's gonna pop up a little tray and there are the seven pages that I've added to the guide. Everybody see that? And, and, and. So both of you guys, it looked like both of you might have said something, but you're muted. If you did. Where, where is the pages button, Kyle? So it's the very bottom down. Oh, I can see underneath I see this now. The pages button. It pops up, right? Yeah. And Thank now you. I can see the seven pages of my guide. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So once you add a page, don't go back over here and click it, right? You're going to come down here and click it. So as you do edits, these are your pages, right? These are the generic ones over here on the left. All right. Now, a couple other tools down here in this bottom tray. The first thing I'll teach you or show you is because there's no starting point, everyone starts with a blank page. So always go in and delete this page, right? And so to do that, right, because this is my first page actually, let me cancel, you will see, right, a blank page here. I'm just gonna go in and click this little drop down arrow and click on delete and it just will delete that page out. Okay. And now I'm down to my six pages that I've added to my guide. Now, let's say you were also scrolling around over here adding pages and they might be out of order. Let's say you want to change the order of the pages in your guide. All you do is drag and drag and drop. So let's say I wanted to start out with the app page, right? Right after the cover page. So I can actually take that and I can drag it and say, make that page number two. See how I did that there? Mm -hmm. And if you added a page by accident or you decided you didn't want it anymore, again, you can just do the drop down and click on delete, right? And delete that page out of your guide. Got it. So, so as it sits right now, my guide is six pages, right? Out of the 31. Now, traditionally, when you do this, I would tell you to go through all the pages. You might end up with 12, 14, 15, something like that, up to 30. All right, any questions on grabbing pages on the left and adding them so that they become part of your guide? That's good. All right. That's good. Here's the next thing that people get stuck on. So I'm going to click on page one down here in the tray. I'm not going to click on it over here on the template section. Right. Right. So if I click on this, you'll see that the page that I can edit is going to change to that cover page. Now, what I do is I just drop the pages down so I can see the whole document. Right. And now down here in the bottom right corner, you can see there's a zoom function. So I can actually now start to zoom in on this page so I can zoom in and edit the, edit the page, right? So in here, a couple things. I might leave it saying client name, or if I'm preparing this for somebody, I can go ahead and click on the text box, right? And I can either double click and I can highlight it and I can change it to say Ann, right? And then I can change the last name to say Beck. All right, so I can click on this text box and do it there. Oh, I tilted in. <laughs> yeah, that looks like me. <laughs> right. Um, so you can change that. And then notice that once you do this one time, you can always come back in here and just edit this and change the name. Right. So you know this one's created for Anne. Next week I have one with Frank, and I can just come in here and change the name of Frank, and then boom, I've got my personalized guide ready to go for Frank. All right. So a couple other things on here. First is this. This is a cover photo. You have a photo here in the middle, right? So when I highlight that picture, when I click on it, it opens up the images tab over here on the left. You could upload your own picture, right? So if you wanted to, you could add your own photo and upload your own photo onto your cover page. Or this is something people are, uh, are finding uh, helpful. When we're in the images tab, it says add company in my library. If I go to the company tab, you will see that we have all these different royalty free photos that KW is going to allow us to use. So if I wanted to, I could click on lifestyle at home and here comes all these different pictures, right? So if you're a dog person instead of a cat person, and so you said, I want to switch out that picture, right? All you're going to do is click on the picture, find the picture that you would like to change it out with, right? And then all you're going to do is you can see when you're highlighted on the picture, you're going to see this replace image button. And all you have to do is click replace image and it'll change that picture out to be the new image that you selected. All right. Everybody see how I did that? Mm -hmm. 
Any questions on that part? Okay. So the last couple things I'm going to do on this cover page is I'm going to click on the logo, right? So this is the, this is the logo that's in the template. So I can't select that. I don't want that. I'm not a Royal Realtors. I'm going to go over to logos, right? And I've uploaded my Keller Williams Fairfax gateway logos. So I don't have a personal team logo. So instead of actually adding something there, I'm simply going to highlight it and just click delete, right? And I can just delete that team logo off of the page if you don't have a logo or replace it with like, I know Ann has the Reliance group, right? That's where your right. logo would go there. Okay. I'm gonna switch the, K, the KWGBA logo. If I highlight that one, again, right? I'm gonna go to my logos and here's my Keller Williams Fairfax Gateway logo. So I can go ahead and put that in. I can move it around to make sure it's, it's formatted properly. And there's Keller Williams Fairfax Gateway. So I just wanna reiterate again, you're not having to do this every time. You're doing this one time. All right, and then, you're, then you have a nice new um, fire console to work off of. Last thing down here, right? I'm gonna click on the picture of this lady right here. That's clearly not me. And same thing, I highlight that photo. I can go to my images tab and go to my library. There's my headshot and replace the headshot with mine. Oh, that is too fast. All right, so click the picture here and then I should be able to come and do replace image and there it replaces the image with my, my headshot. All right. The other thing I want to show you guys is this, um, which is there's two ways to add text basically when you're in a text box. I mean, some of you guys have seen this before, but if I click on first name, I can either double click and try to edit that text. Or when you click on a text box here, you get this toolbar up top, See this toolbar up top here. And one of the options in the toolbar is typewriter. And what it'll actually do is it opens up almost like a word document where you can type, right? Kyle Holleran hit save, and then those, those changes will appear on the graphic. Let me see that. I find that easier than trying to double click and highlight text and edit text inside the box. Okay. All right, so there's page one is done. So what I'm gonna do is uh, to come down to the next page, I'm either gonna click the pages button here and go to the next page, or I can simply click this arrow right here and say, take me to page number two. And it says, okay, great. We're gonna save your changes there. And we're going to page number two. Same thing, guys, right? This is where you can zoom in. You could change this text, right? Everything is editable. So instead of it saying my app, you could say Ann's app. Okay. And I could pull this text box out a little bit. So let me see. Let me move this text box up. All right. And I can pull it over. And that way it says Ann's app. All right. So all of this becomes editable. If you wanted to change any of the information in any of these paragraphs, you can. Uh, but again, they give you a nice little template here where you might be good to go. Notice on this one down here, it says head to app.kw.com slash XXX. So you want to make sure you go into command and you grab your app URL. Don't let it stay like this. Because then if the consumer actually gets this guide, they're going to be, they're going to realize you didn't finish editing that page. So where do we grab our own app link from? All right, good question. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up another screen of agent.kw.com, right? So we're going to, I'm going to open up a different screen of command. Right. So, and to get your app URL, the easiest thing to do is go down to the bottom left-hand side. You guys are going to see your consumer tab. Got it. Click on consumer tab. And when you're in the consumer tab, there's going to be a, a little button up here. When we load in, it says site and app settings. Okay, you guys see that up top right there? Click on site and app settings. It brings us to this screen here and you see these four tabs on the site and app settings. One of them says URLs. Got it. Go ahead and click on URLs. And on this page right here is the URL for your app. Okay. Oh, got it. Okay. So what I would do is I'm going to click on copy, right? I'm going to copy that URL. I'll go back to my design. Right, I'll click on that little text box right there. I'm gonna open up the typewriter so I can I can easily cop, copy and paste. And it says head to, uh, and I'm gonna copy this and I'll paste my URL. And hit save changes, right? And now on this guide, now it's customized down at the bottom with my app URL. All right, you all good on that? Okay. How did you get to the typewriter thingy? Yeah, so you get to the typewriter anytime you click on a text box. Okay. So if I click on this text box right here, and especially in paragraph form, it's the easiest thing to do. 
when you click on a text box and it highlights that text box with these dotted lines, we now get this toolbar up top. All right, and then the, the typewriter is right next to the size oh, of the font. Okay. You guys see that there? Yes. That's where I can open it up and edit all this text, um, then hit save, and then it just formats it properly for me when I come back in. So if you were to change the top to say Ann's app as opposed to my app, mm -hmm. we would want to go in and reformat each paragraph so, so it re emphasizes Ann's app. Yeah. You know, especially if you okay. if you're if you're on a team, right, and you're saying uh, we, right. right, then you're gonna have to change all those pronouns from you know singular to plural. That and you can do that through that paragraph section. Okay, off. perfect. Okay. All right, and then simply we're gonna click on next here, right? I'm gonna go to the next page. So you guys get the idea, right? We're just gonna go page by page and edit these pages and customize them to to your business. Okay. I, I know I've already mentioned this, but here's the here's the one fatal flaw that people get into which is you guys remember that we, we customized this cover page right here, right? And we added a different picture and we changed right. that and said, and so you don't get back to it by clicking on this right here. If you click on this again, it's going to add another cover sheet to your guide. Right. So just remember you go down here and click on pages and then click on this page right here. And now we'll see the edited copy with Anne and the picture that we uploaded. All right. So some people get frustrated they keep clicking over here and they'll call me and say, I've got 19 cover photos. <laughs> it's because they kept clicking here thinking that's how they got back to the save design that they had edited. Got it. Okay. All right. So the only other thing I want to kind of touch on here, other than, you know, you guys just, just working your way through these different pages is um, I think Anne or, or uh, sorry, no, Erica had mentioned this. So one of the pages or a couple of the pages here are these neighborhood insights. Okay, so I'm going to pull up this page here and add this over into um, into this document. So neighborhood insights, right? And you can see that there's these placeholders, right, where you can go in and you could actually change this to be a different map of a neighborhood and then fill in the different stats about the neighborhood. All right. So in order to, to pull these types of maps, right, and edit these, what you're going to do is you're going to click on it. And when you click on that map, you'll see that we get a tab over here that says KWLS. See that over here? Yep. So I'm going to click on KWLS. And up top, when I click on that, most people use this for the listing details, right? The photos, the listings. A lot of people miss that there's another tab here that says snapshots. And so what I can do is I click snapshots and this, it says search neighborhood name. All right, so that's where I can now come in and search for a neighborhood. So if I knew, um, you know, Ann was looking in a certain neighborhood, I come in here and type in Ben Oaks, right? And I'll do Ben Oaks, Maryland. I always like to try to add the state and do a search, and it's going to give me the different neighborhoods here. All right, I'm going to try to find the neighborhood. So here's Ben Oaks and Severna Park, right? It's the neighborhood next to me. So once I find Ben Oaks, right, all I'm going to do is click on Ben Oaks, and you'll see I get a little wheel that starts spinning. Okay, and when that wheel stops spinning, it gives me the map for Ben Oaks right there. It gives me the stats about Ben Oaks, if it has any, and it also has this stats right here. So in this form here, or in this document, they're only using the map. So if I wanted to, I'm gonna click on Barton Hills. I'll come over here to Ben Oaks, click replace, and there's the map now that says Ben Oaks. Okay, now Ann, if you were looking for a house, what neighborhood would you be looking in? Give me a neighborhood. Ashburn Village. So let's try to see if we can find Ashburn Village. All right, so I type That's in it. Ashburn. It I type in Ashburn Village, right? And I've got Ashburn Village right here. So again, to replace Hyde Park, which is down in Austin, I'm going to click on Hyde Park. I'm going to open up Ashburn Village. It's going to right create the little map for me, and then I'm going to click Replace Image. And so now, right, this buyer guide has the two neighborhoods that Anne is interested in, right? Bed Oaks and Ashburn Village with a little map. And then you guys can go ahead and put in your stats here if you wanted to add those stats into, um, into the page. So in this particular format, we would have to manually put in average list price and all of that. But it looks like um, to the left of the screen, mm -hmm. we could actually download that information or bring a different graphic over yeah exactly so different pages and have these different graphics there there are some in here that have this full kind of stat sheet right here 
Got it. Use that stat sheet and pull that in, right? So if I wanted to do something like this, right, I'm going to shrink it down a little bit and I can move that over here to Ashburn Village, right, and use it this okay. way. Okay. Here's it. the only thing, though. So um, this only is based off of like like average days on market is based on the one active listing that's been there. So the only problem I see with these is that this data is a little bit skewed sometimes because it's not all average days on market. It's pulling days on market for that one listing. So just, just check it before you launch it. I, yeah, because, well, this information I, I know is not correct. Yeah. So. so that's where you just need to be careful using these graphics because I would agree with you that a lot of times this data is not right. Um, right. So just be careful. You might, you might be better off using something that looks like this behind it, going to the MLS and pulling a couple of the stats and adding in some of those details here. Hey, hey Kyle. Yep. This is Bob Nelson. Um, I have a question specific about that. If you look at that Ashburn Village one, and it happens a lot in Ashburn with, with these neighborhood reports, is they're so hyper-local yep. that you're not really getting any data okay. um, because there just isn't that much data in a lot of these tiny, tiny little neighborhoods. What are people doing? Are they just not using these? What are people doing to get past that? All right, so here's what some people are doing. So let me show you this one, right? So this is a little bit bigger one. Now, again, guys, right, and I know you guys know this, these neighborhoods are being pulled from next door, right? So that's why we're seeing some of those things. Now, let's say you pull over this Ashburn Village one, right? And Bob, you might say, hey, I'd like to use this simply because I like the format. It's got the map here, but this information is wrong. So what some people are doing is they're starting with this little template here, and they're going to the MLS and pulling the actual data, right? Getting the real information or doing your bright MLS search there. And then let's say that um, total active is wrong. All right, so let me pull this graphic up. All right, let's say that total active is wrong here. So what they're doing is, is they actually will just come in and they'll just add a shape, right? And they might just grab like a little square. Mm -hmm. And they'll actually just shrink this down. I know it's a little bit of work and this may not make sense for all of your listing presentations, but they'll grab a little square here, right? They'll shrink it down a little bit. They'll move it right over top of that eight number. They will change the color to white and then they'll type in the actual number, right? So then they'll add a piece of text here and they'll say, I wanted to do it as a body text or whatever it's going to be. But even if you look at the maps, the maps aren't. The yeah, maps so are all wrong. Because well, they're, they're not wrong. They're just little not portions of The complete neighborhood. That's, yeah. you know, when you look at, yeah. you put in Ashburn Village, the way the snaps pulls up Ashburn Village, um, it pulls it up in four different sections. So yeah. it doesn't really pull. Yeah, so the reason that does it that way is because that's the way Nextdoor has it mapped, yeah. right? And again, yeah. the neighborhoods are pulled from Nextdoor. So if you want to be able to use these snapshots or the, or the maps of the neighborhoods, that's right now where it's being pulled from. I know I've asked this, maybe every one of these I've been on with you. Yeah. <laughs> but I think you said it first, so that's why I always ask. Is any rumors on being able to draw? No, nope, there was screenshots of it back, you know, maybe seven or eight months ago, but I've not heard any sort of update on that being allowed to happen yet. Okay. So yeah, would be really awesome. cool. this might be this might be the page you skip, right? If the numbers yeah. don't look right for you. Um, now again, it is more of a Loudoun County issue. Just so everybody knows, like when we look at some of these neighborhoods in Arlington, and our, I don't know if it's because it's more populated, and so more people have given input on those neighborhoods um, in terms of on next door. Um, but Loudoun County specifically is the one that's mostly broken up um, versus it kind of being something that you guys could use. All right, all right. So just decide on whether or not that makes any sort of sense to you there. Um, I'm going to go back here real quick and show you just the buyer checklist. So did you guys see this real quick? So in here, right, there's a couple other pages. One of them is financing your home. If I zoom in on this one, right, there's giving them some nice, you know, do's and don'ts about, you know, buying a house and what they should be doing. Some of these pages, you could use them individually, right? So just remember that even though they're in the guide, I had someone call me the other day and they were asking me for, hey, you know, I'm looking for a checklist of things that agents do to help people in buying a house. All right, well, I might come in here and I've got two pages of the buying process. I might just extract these two pages for that if I wanted to be able to use that, All right? So I can zoom in how buying a home works. So, you know, step one, partner with an agent, then there's all the different steps, right? Step two, all the different steps. So you guys can edit these and use them as you wish. Okay. All right, now, the last thing on this, and I want to show you a couple things over in the buyer's guide, but it's very similar over there, is I've got, you know, I've got my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pages now, right? Whenever I'm done editing this, okay, 
first thing is go up, oh, go up top here and make sure you name it properly. So when I do this, I'm going to call it my master copy. I'm going to call it master copy buyer guide, All right? So I'll, I'll name that. And then I've got the little arrow here and I can hit the download button. And the best way to do this is so when you hit that download button, you have three tabs here. It says get JPEG, PNG, or PDF. And so you want to download it as a PDF, right? And it says, all right, do you want to do all pages? So I'll say, yep, all pages from pages one to seven. And I want it in, you know, standard, or I could say I want it in high resolution print quality, and then hit start download. Right, and it starts to download that document now onto my computer. So now I've got a PDF of my guide. Got it. And so it's coming in right now, and it'll go ahead and save. Let's wait for a second. Still working and then I'll share with you what it looks like from there all right so any questions on this guide just picking your pages editing things saving in master copy any questions on that at all no all right I got a quick question for you if it's, it's Bob again yeah go ahead. um oh on the the button next to the download button on that last screen mm -hmm. I think it's share yeah does that make it a site yeah, so I wouldn't use this. Um, and I kind of talk about this in my designs classes. So the, the, what this will do is we brand will post it on your page. Okay. The, the issue with that is, is like Bob, you kind of mentioned there, it doesn't create a site, but it creates like a link. So when someone sees it, it looks like when they, especially like a postcard for a just listed, it looks like they should be able to click on it and go to a website and see more pictures. And it just pulls up the graphic again. So my suggestion is always to download it and post it yourself. It's just going to be a better user experience than clicking this share button. Is there, is there any talk about potentially making, having the ability to make this a dynamic site, right? So that the, the market data could update and. Yeah, could definitely. Be that, that is absolutely something on the roadmap, but I don't think we're close to that just yet. Cool. All right. Now let me show this to you guys, right? So this is then how I would present it on my computer. Right? So if I was doing a Zoom call here with Ann Beck doing a buyer consultation, now that I've downloaded this document, now just like you guys are looking at it, I'm sharing the document and I can say, all right, Ann, so you know, let's go ahead and get started and go over this buyer's guide. And I'm going to be able to say, all right, so Ann, so the first thing we're going to do is download the mobile app. Right? So again, after I create this, this is how I'm displaying it in a virtual setting when I'm doing a virtual buyer or seller consultation. Nice. The flip side of it is I just download it and print it. Right? So when we go back to normal and we're able to go meet our buyers in the office, now I've got a PDF file, I'm just gonna print at the office. But right now, you know, we can scroll through and I can say, so let's go ahead and take a look at the home buying guide. And remember, you can zoom in here. So I can go ahead and say, so Ann, let's go ahead and talk about step number one, right? Partnering with me, right? So that, so again, once you create the guide, this is how you can go ahead and share it to your consumer. Um, so you can have a good consultation and be working off of something similar. Okay. Good to go there? Yep. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, now that I've created this, I've named it, I'm going to click done. That'll take me back to KW command. So it'll get me out of designs and take me back to KW command. Here's what I like to show here. So now in my design templates, when I go back into designs, you will see that it says master copy buyer guide. That's what I just named it. And it's, it's updated on March, May 5th, 2020. So let's say next week I've got an appointment with Frank. I can either just click on this guide and go in and edit it or you leave this as the master copy so it never gets manipulated, right? Instead, what I'm gonna do is click the three dots right here and I'm able to say, make a copy, right? Oh, and excellent. call that copy Frank Vincent Buyer Guide. Got it. Okay. So that's why we're gonna save it as a master copy and then we can create a, um, we can create a copy there. Okay. Is there any way to make folders in that view? Say that again? Is there any way to make folders or do some kind of organization? Not yet, but I have actually seen uh, some screenshots of that happening, Bob. Okay. So I think that is coming. The other way, I guess, just the easier, this is showing you all of your designs. Um, if it's something you guys are starting to really get in here and play with all different types of designs, realize if you click on print up top here, it'll, it'll narrow it down to just your print pieces. And I find that is a little bit easier to find the materials you're looking for. All right, last thing I want to show you is we're going to go back in again. So I'm going to do plus. So we're kind of repeating the process. So if you missed the beginning, you can watch it here. So I'm going to click on start. I'm going to do print. I'll click next. Now we're going to, we're going to look at the listing uh, consultation real quick. It works exactly the same way. 
you're going to have that tray. You're going to pull in your pages. You're going to customize. Um, everything works out the same. So I'm going to go here to listings now. I've got listing presentations. Again, I've got two listing templates here to choose from, just like we did in the buyer guide. Let's go ahead and maybe pick the modern one this time. I'll go ahead and click use. And then again, I'll start adding pages into the guide. So on here, two things that are a little bit different. Let me find the pages first. So obviously on the listing guide, we're going to see things like this one right here, comps. All right, so I'm going to pull this page in real quick. So these are comparable properties over here. All right. And then the other one I want to kind of showcase a little bit is there's also one in here for marketing your home. So your media plan. All right. So I'm just going to pull in these two just for the class. So let's go to comps first. All right. So let's say you are preparing a listing presentation and I'm going to do this one with the NES and I have looked up on the MLS, right? Different uh, comps that I need to use. Well, you can see here, one of the pages is comp properties. Here's one of the advantages of using uh, designs potentially, which is, remember we got KWLS down here in the corner and I have all the listing data. So if I came in here and I knew that uh, 404 Dale Road was a comp, right? I can type in 404 Dale Road, see if I can find that listing. Let's see if I can find, so this is, this is one of my houses. So if I click on 404 Dale Road, right? This house closed three years ago now. So this is pulling in old data as well. It's not just active properties. But again, let's say this property is a comp for my subject property. I can simply click on this picture and pull in that house, right? And change the data there to match 404 Dale Road. And then my second comp is going to be, you know, 123 Main Street. I'll just see if we can find a property this way. So let's say we, we search for our second comp property, right? We're going to do a search. And we've got these other properties here. So let's say this was the second comp property. Right, I can just hit select, I click on this one, I can click the replace button and update this image here. So if you wanna kind of find a way to showcase your comps in a nice kind of easy way, I like this page as well. And you don't have to go in and download pictures from the MLS, you can just pull them from the KWS side. So you really could, once you find the comp, you could pull in any photograph that shows up here. It doesn't have to be the front photo, the yep. main photo, right? Yep, exactly. So if I wanted to say, hey, you know, kitchens, Right. Yeah, uh, you don't want to look like this. Yep. <laughs> you want to look like that one? All right. So yeah, and to that point, you can definitely um, you can definitely do yeah. That. That's nice. All right. So that's a nice page. The other one on here that people like is there's a marketing page. This is really if you want to wow somebody, I think it takes a little bit of time, but I think it can make sense. Which is on this screen here on this on this page, it says your media plan. Right, so if I zoom in, now remember if I printed this off, this would obviously you know, be a little bit bigger than what we're looking at on the screen here. It's showing you an example of what a property brochure, or a just listed flyer and a postcard could look like if that seller hired you. These are not pictures, these are actually live templates. And so what I mean by that is, let's go back and let's say this is the property I'm gonna list, right? So I either have the photos or remember, I can go up here to images and I can add a couple pictures of the house that I'm trying to, uh, to list. Got it. What I can do is I can actually click on that picture within the property brochure and replace it with that image right there. You guys see how that happened? And I can actually go into the flyer. If I zoom in a little bit further, right, I can actually zoom into the flyer and, and, and say, hey, that's this is what you're, oh, wrong one. Make sure you click on the picture first. So I can click on this picture in the flyer and say, hey, make it look like that. Right, and then to Anne's point, I could actually go into these photos, the smaller ones, and put in pictures of the kitchen. Right, so you can almost mock up what the marketing materials would look like if this person were to hire you. Got it. That's nice. And that's kind of another one that people really like using. If you've got a couple of pictures of the outside of that property, you know, you could say, "Hey, here's a mock-up. You know, hire me tonight, and I'll go ahead and create all these marketing materials and have them launched and ready to go in 24 hours." Okay, so. Guys, just like we did in the buyer console guide, I'd obviously would add you know as many pages as you'd like. And then once you're done editing that, I'm gonna go ahead and name this one, right? Uh, master seller guide. And same thing as before, right? Go over here and do download and do get PDF and download that seller guide now to my computer. In a normal time, I would then print that and go to the house or 
Um, it's going to download in my little tray right here. And just like I shared the buyer's guide, you'll be able to pull that up on your computer and share that seller's guide as you're talking through your consultation with somebody. Else. All right. So that's how you get in and play with and work on the buyer and the seller guide in designs. Great. Helpful? Very. All right. Questions. <sighs> This does, this, listen, this, and I'm going to be the first one to tell you, this is going to take a little bit of time yeah. where we have some downtime right now. It, it, I think it's in your best interest. Spend a couple hours customizing this and then all through the summer into the fall, you don't have to worry about your listening buyer guide. All you have to do is go back and change a name and you're off to the races. Awesome. Kyle, yeah. uh, th this is something that in addition to online, we could print so that that would be the brochure in the listed property for others to pick up when they show. So you could do that, but remember, this is the guide. So in that case, what I would do is I'm actually going to go back to designs, sure. right? And in the listing section, just like where we selected the listing, con there's flyers, right? And I okay. would actually create the flyer to take to. So, and to your point, here's designs again. I would actually go to for sale and I'd actually create the flyer. Awesome. Thank you. And so that's where I'm going to create the flyer, download that as a PDF, and that's what I'm giving out in my open. Perfect timing, thank you. And you also, Great. you know, just so you guys know in here, if you haven't been in here in a while, they do have the buy folds, right? The different, um, you know, so if you wanted to and got used to them, you could create your, you know, your almost like a menu. And instead of having to pay, you know, your photo company 45 bucks to design that, you can just go in here and create it yourself if you got good at using designs. Good question. Erica, good. Bob, Inez, Frank, anything else? All good. All right. Awesome. Great. All right, perfect. Well, I will go ahead and post the video. If you guys have any questions, you know, let me know as you start going through it. Um, and uh, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. Sure thing. Talk to you guys soon.